Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Do you ever wonder what other societies look like? Not just aliens, though definitely aliens, but also civilizations that aren't like ours that are right here on Earth. Well, today you're in for a treat. We have 10 amazing societies to teach you about, all of which have one thing in common, women rule. These matriarchal societies will teach you about a new way of life that, who knows, maybe you'll want to adopt. But before we get started, why not become an archivist today by clicking that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. If you end up enjoying this video, let us know by giving it a thumbs up. And in the comment section, tell us what your perfect civilization would look like. Number 10. Mosuo. Mosuo is a Chinese community mainly in southwest China. They're located near Lugu Lake by the Tibetan Himalayas and have a population of about 40,000 people. Can you imagine the landscapes? With that kind of backdrop, who even has time to fret about who's in charge? The women seem to be doing just fine. The Mosuo are a beautiful community and have a tradition of always living with their Ami, or the elder female. This Ami is in charge of the household, its decisions, the division of labor among family members, and all of the important decision making. Basically, everyone under her roof lives to help, love, and obey the Ami. Mosuo families tend to trace their lineage through the female side of the family, and it's not unusual for the father to go unrecorded. Number 9. Manang Kabao These Indonesian people have the largest matriarchal society in the world. They live in the Sumatra region and have around 8 million members. Everything in their society gets passed down through the woman's side, from land ownership to family names. Legend has it, they used to be a patriarchal society until a king died and left behind three wives with three baby sons. His first wife took over, since her son was too young, and ever since, they figured the women were doing a pretty good job. So they continued the matriarchy. Women hold down the fort, and men often leave the homeland in search of opportunities and education. Number 8. Bree Bree Okay, how cool is the name of this community? They're also located in Costa Rica and Panama, so you know they have a beautiful life. In their community, it is only women that can inherit land. They're also the ones to prepare the ritual cacao that's used in ceremonies. We still aren't sure how many people are in this community, but there may be up to 35,000. The legend behind this society says that a past woman was turned into a cacao tree by a Bri Bri god, and ever since, only women are allowed to prepare their sacred cacao drink. Men are in charge of singing funeral songs and are the only ones allowed to touch the remains of the dead. These men are called Awa, and they start training at eight years old. Number 7. Umoja this Kenyan society gets their name from Swahili, meaning oneness or unity, which just makes sense when you're talking about matriarchal societies. Umoja in Sambura, northern Kenya, serves also as a refuge for women who are fleeing abuse in patriarchal societies. This village was started in 1990, and its first members were rape victims of British soldiers that were temporarily in Kenya. Now Umoja is a rescue center for these victims, as well as victims of CGM, child marriage, and other forms of gender-specific human rights violations. They're taught how to make jewelry and sell to tourists in the area. The most interesting part about this society is that men are banned from entering. Number 6. Akan the Akan people of Ghana, an estimated 20 million in population, was built around the Maitre clan. From there, Akan people get their identity, their inheritance, their wealth, and just about anything of importance. The Maitre clan founders are all female, but men hold leadership positions within their society. These roles are passed down on the mother's side. Women don't support men and their families, men do, and are not only expected to support their own, but also those of his female relatives. Expectations, am I right? Number 5. Garo In the Indian state of Meghalaya, the Tibeto-Burman-speaking people also follow along with trends of our other societies, passing down properties and political succession on the mother's side, though only to the daughter this time. 
The youngest, not the oldest, is the one who inherits her mother's property. This is what we call a matrilineal society, where, like the Akan, women low-key rule, but men high-key rule. Boys leave the house at puberty until they get married, in which they move into their wife's home. Men also hold the leadership positions, governing society and managing property, while the women own the property, pass down their surname, and they take care of the children. The youngest daughter, the heiress, has her marriage arranged for her, but her sisters have a much longer process to face. The groom is expected to run away from marriage, then her family has to kidnap him and take him to his potential bride's village, not just once, but until either the bride gives up or her groom accepts her. Number 4. Nagovisi This New Guinea society is divided into two matrilineal parts, which are then divided into matri clans. The women in this society are involved in leadership, but often work the land entitled to them and take great pride in it. In marriage, women hold gardening and shared sexuality at equal importance. Marriage isn't institutionalized, meaning that if a couple shares sexuality, if he helps her with her garden, if they're seen together, they're as good as married. Number 3. The Hopi People This Native American tribe, who primarily live on the Hopi Reservation in northeastern Arizona, have over 19,000 members according to the 2010 census. They are a sovereign nation within the United States and retain autonomy under the Hopi Constitution and bylaws. Hopi are organized into matrilineal clans, meaning their genealogy is traced back through the female side. Children are named by the women of the father's clan, and on the 20th day of the baby's life, the women of the paternal clan gather, each woman bringing a name and a gift for the child. Generally, women are in charge of the home and family matters, while the men are in charge of agriculture and war. Number 2. Papua New Guinea The Trobriand of Papua New Guinea have specific gender roles. Men go from island to island, looking for political positions of power. Women, in the meantime, are given autonomy via matrilineal institutions. They hold value and are free to take on roles that men usually take in society. Anthropologists had the wrong idea about Trobrianders for a long time. Each gender is trusted with a variety of roles, and they are both quite dominant. Yams play an important part in their culture, being used for both peace offerings, marriage, and divorce customs. It is said that the more yams a woman receives at her wedding, the more powerful and rich she is. Number 1. Kasi Kasi is another matrilineal and matrilocal culture that's found in India. Like most other societies, children take the name of their mothers. Daughters also inherit their mother's riches. Children also live with the mother's family, assuring the economic well-being of everyone, whether there is a divorce in the family or not. A woman could marry many times, and her children always stay with her. In fact, even if the father of a child leaves before they're born, the child is never illegitimate. Thanks for watching. How many of you think women really rule anyway, regardless of the outward appearances of any given society? What's the old saying? The hand that rocks the cradle rules the world? Tell us your thoughts in the comments. Also be sure to show your support of Top 10 Archive by subscribing, hitting the notifications bell, and giving this video a like.